Hello and welcome to episode 2 of Answers on a Podcast Please, the podcast where we get to know more about the Wesley congregation. My name is Ben and each week I'll be joined by two guests to share stories and memories and have a little bit of fun. This week my guests are Joan Pike and Martin Washbourne who are both popular and well-established members of the church. Hello Martin, hello Joan, how are you both doing? Fine. Hello, hello Ben. Excellent, fab, nice to see you both. We're going to, let's dive straight in because we've got lots to talk about today. Um, Joan, tell us a little bit about your connection with Wesley, when you first came, how you first came to be in the church. Well, um, I've been in the church all my life. Uh, I was christened at Wesley. My, my parents were married at Wesley. Oh, my word. And in fact, my paternal grandfather was choir master at Wesley. Oh, wow. And my maternal great grandmother has a little pluck by the the, the door from the Queen's Road entrance. So, uh, yeah, oh, so I've been going to Wesley for quite a long time. So you really are part of the part of the part furniture. Of the furniture. <laughs> and and so uh, you did say that you were you were christened here. Um, so that means that you've been Wesley has been your only church all all, all your life. Yes, I mean I, I apart from my years at university when I went to Methodist Church in Edinburgh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Well, I don't think I think we do well to find someone who can who can trump those <laughs> those stats. And Martin, how about you? I, I dare say you've not been here as long as Joan. Uh, well, no, no, no. Um, I it was really by happenstance. Um, and uh, because I'm not born and bred Reading Jensian or whatever we call ourselves. Yeah, I'm from Sutton Coldfield, uh, in the bastion of poshness in the Midlands. Um, and uh, and actually, I'm I'm here now because I'm with my parents and haven't gone back uh, from um, from lockdown yet. So um, so I was born um, quite literally six feet away from, from, from where I am now uh, in, in this very home. You were born in the same the same house that your parents still live in, like John Stiles. Yes, very much so, but quite literally born six feet away. Um, yeah. And anyway, so I went to Reading uh, to go to university and I uh, and, and it was just so by happenstance I lived in the Grove, which is uh, around uh, the, the corner from the church, isn't it? Um, and uh, what? Well, and during my teenage years, I, I, the minister up here in Sutton had changed, and I kind of, as teenagers kind of do, they kind of, it, it kind of fades away. And I didn't terribly like the replacement, and 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 it just didn't mean as much. And so I kind of stopped going. And um, I, I, then it became sort of a, a latent Christianity. It was still there. It was still there, but it was, I just didn't go. And um, anyway, 2003, wonderful summer. And I had a, my, my best friend was staying over at my house. So he was at, at mine for a month and he was shift working. And I remember sort of saying, oh, well, there's the Methodist church. I ought to, I ought to go, I ought to go. And he, and he literally said one day, for God's sake, go. Don't talk about it, just go. <laughs> and so I did. And, and, and it, 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 it's almost a wonderful two meanings to that really, for God's sake, go. And I'm so glad yeah. I did because... Um, I went and it was the wonderful Valerie Fisher Fantastic. presiding. And she was just this, this, this raucous, this, this, this firework of energy and faith and fabulousness. I'd love to describe, you know, you just know that energy. And, and I remember the service. It was, we said yes to Jesus. And she was, and I just was transfixed. I was, I was just thought, wow, this is brilliant. I'm definitely coming back. So had it been a very dreary minister, I'm not sure I would have done. No, it was that firework that you needed at that time. Absolutely, absolutely. So I, I, I went and, and the rest is, is history. It is so my church. I love it. I love coming here uh, when, when we can, obviously. Yeah. Um, but, but no, this, this is, 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 you know, Wesley is, is mine. Yeah. Fantastic. I have lots of lots of stories I could tell of Martin because he used to uh, he used to lead uh, junior church sessions that I was in. But we'll we'll leave that perhaps for another day. <laughs> oh, yes. We have a whole podcast on just those those years. <laughs> um, so Martin and I have um, have got a, a good relationship from that. And Joan has been has been involved with the, with the choir for a long time. And we've we, and especially in lockdown. In fact, we'll come to that a little bit later, Joan. Um, Joan, you, you and your late husband, Derek, who was also um, a, a very, very much loved member of the church and have been here a long time, you established a partnership with a village in Ghana um, between, between the church and Ghana. Is that correct? That's right. Um, it was back in 2012. And Derek and I were fair trade reps at, at Wesley. And we kept getting publicity from trade crafts saying, come on one of our 
Meet the People Tours, which, which basically means that we had the chance to visit, well, lots of countries, but specifically this one was Ghana, to meet the people who grew uh, the cocoa pods for divine chocolate. So we decided we would go, and um, it, it really was an eye-opener. Um, and there were about 12 of us in the group, and one day the, the lady who was organising it for us said, we're going to a village called Amanquatia. It's miles from anywhere, so be prepared for a very long, dusty, bumpy ride, which it was. And we're going to see the villagers. I, I am going because I'm part of Quapa Cocoa, which was the, um, the cooperative that these cocoa farmers gave their cocoa pods to. I'm going to take a colleague. We're going to weigh the cocoa pods and um, give them the cash for it. And it's a chance to meet them. So that was fine. We went. Um, what we hadn't realised was that this village that was miles from anywhere, a very small village, had no running water and it had no toilets. Now, if you think about 12 Brits being in a village for a day, um, that was something of a trial. Yeah. And it's what set us thinking, well, you know, this is an awful situation to be in. And uh, the two of us were talking afterwards and saying, well, why don't we float it past people at Wesley? People at Wesley are very generous. Um, and the fact that we have many Ghanaians in the congregation who from whom we we could learn they, they could give us tips on, on the best way to do this and lo and behold Wesley was behind us and so it went on and um, I'm still in touch with this lady Esther from Kwapa Koko and what was nice about four years after that everything had been put in place her Christmas email she said what is wonderful is that the number of girls in the school has increased it tremendously now that we have toilets in the school and you know these are little things that you don't think of at the time and of course since then we've gone on and collected laptops and computers and things for them so uh, I was going to say I remember there being a, a video we saw in church of them receiving their their computers and setting up the that's internet right. yes so um, no it, it, it was a great thing to have done yeah, yeah I, I didn't I didn't realize it was um entirely separate from from the tradecraft the tradecraft mission that you went on originally yes no um, it, it, it precipitated it um, okay. uh, yeah. uh, i think my first ever accordion concert as an accordionist a complete solo concert was in aid of the amaquatia project i've still got the poster in my uh in, in my room so the words amaquatia above my bed on that poster so i, I remember the concert because uh, i sort of arm twisted some musical friends to come and uh, the comment in the interval if you don't mind saying isn't he young? <laughs> I, I was 18. Uh, no, I would have ju just been 19, actually, because right. for those of you who don't know, I, I'm a professional musician. and I, I went, I did my undergraduate at the Royal Academy of Music, and this concert was on the same day as my Academy audition. So I remember travelling up to London early, early to do this audition, coming back on the train. Instead of going home, I got, I walked from the station to Wesley, started practicing for this concert. And then, so it was a very, um, a very manic day, um, but it was, it was very rewarding. And to obviously to do it for such a great cause. And I remember that um, your husband, Derek, he, he uh, created the program for me. And there was a blurb in there about Amanquatia. So it certainly sort of um, embedded itself very much in, in the Wesley, in the Wesley culture now, which is fantastic. Martin, you, you mentioned um, that you, you love our church so much and, that, and I said you've been involved in, um, in the junior church. You're also very good at, at dramatic readings, <laughs> uh, dramatic yes. Bible readings, whether that's in church or, or on, the screen, on the screen at the moment. Both of you are involved, have been involved in performing arts in various guises over your, your lives. Um, and Martin, let's start with you. You do some amateur dramatics and stuff, don't you? Writing pantomimes, acting in them, all sorts of things. Is, is that still i okay. certainly do i certainly do and some of the listeners here the lovely listeners out there in the ether may remember jill sharp who um along uh, uh, alongside me uh, was a member of the shimpil players theater and i'm still a member um and uh, there's a lovely story i won't desperately bore you to death with but i'll do the, the praisey version of it which is in 2010 on a bright sunday morning um in march i think it was i woke up and i thought I want to be in a panto. I don't know why, but that thought was in my head. Um, and then I went to church and everything else and everything was fine. And anyway, so uh, a month or so later, I was at a friend's birthday party 
And I bumped into one of his friends who does that sort of thing. And he, he said, do you know, I had this really weird dream. I want to be the band and everything else. And he said, wait till about September, find your local group and sort of turn up. And that's precisely what I did. And I, Stringfield Players is about well, less than a mile down the road from where I live in Reading. So I went down and I just said, hi, I'm Martin from the streets, thinking I'll do a J-Lo reference. That'll be fab. Anyway, <laughs> so I went, and uh, it was Cinderella and everything was wonderful. And I auditioned. And uh, the audition was brilliant, except for one small fact. I had my back to the audience throughout the whole audition. And the director thought, he's actually quite good. If you can just turn him around, he'd be great. So I got the role of uh, the Herald, I think, which is this slightly, slightly um, sort of squiffy um, sort of uh, butler uh, to the uh, to the um, the gentry and um, it was a wonderful experience and I just didn't look back and here's the funny thing I've been because I've been in my parents house I've been sort of scaring for anything artistic and you know uh, am dram at home and the funny thing is it just didn't happen. I wasn't in the school play every year. I was, and I did it once. I didn't do any of that stuff. It literally has come from being an adult. I, I never was in a, a you know, like a, like a, a theatrical youth group. I haven't got theatrical parents. It just happened, and I'm so glad it did because I've since been in, I think six pantos, a number of dramas, um, and and three musicals. Uh, two of which I haven't, I, I've sort of sung a little bit in. Um, my favourite being, oh, actually, yeah, I'm not sure what my favourite favorite musical is. I still think it's Dagenham, um, Made in Dagenham, where I was Jeremy Hopkins, the uh, chief executive of Ford Dagenham, where my, my solo is eight words. Still a solo. <laughs> Which is brilliant for a song, eight said words. It's, it's just wonderful. But I love that show. And you were, if I remember correctly, a few years ago, you were writing something yeah a couple of years back um i i wrote uh I, I sort of half half wrote a panto so we had puss in boots um and it was sort of tied around and said well I, I don't mind sort of co-directing it sort of I suppose more lead directing it because um i'd got i'd already directed once before my co-director had never directed so just organically i became more the director and she became more the um producer so, uh, and that was Puss in Boots. And what I did do um, is I took the basic script written by one of our rather elderly gentlemen. And it's a, it, it was a very good, it was a good sort of skeleton script. And I went through it on the bus to work every day. I went through it line by line, syllable by syllable, and, and just wrote um, and, and modernized it, basically. I adapted it, I modernized it. I kept, and I was very particular to keep the storyline the same. It was just that it would be modernised and 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 put some gags in there. And there were some gags that were so new that even the audience didn't get them. Um, so it was the year when Prince um, Prince Philip crashed the Range Rover, and that happened the Friday. I think the Friday when we were opening on the Friday night. And so by the end of that Friday, uh, we'd done the show, and I said to to the King, uh, I said can we get this in there? I'm in the bar. I said, can we get this in there? And by the time we'd left at about half 10, 11 o'clock at night, a new gag was in that show. And on the on Saturday afternoon, the new gag was said. So I tried to make it as fresh as possible. And that was my intention throughout the whole, the whole of that show was to keep it fresh, to keep it relevant, to keep it really achingly modern, even to the point that for the first time ever, Stringfield Players Theatre had rap. And it was all because of the gag line. Um, I was like, I'm going to eat you in a rap. What tortilla? No, hit it, boom. And if you if you don't know what a tortilla is, then it's sort of probably lost on you. But um, that's fantastic, Martin. Well, one day, one day we'll get to maybe we'll get to bring that out of the uh, of the of the archives and play it somewhere. <laughs> oh yes, there might be some bits and pieces out there that uh, yeah. But now, Joan Martin's uh, presented us with his his thespian side. Uh, you've been a, a, a stalwart of choirs throughout the years, haven't you? I have. I've always enjoyed singing in choirs. I mean, I started singing in the Wesley Choir when I was a teenager. Um, and when I went to university, I sang in the university choir. And it was one of the things Derek did as well. He was part of the university choir. 
Um, when we came back, it seemed quite natural to join the Reading University Choir, so we carried on with that. And uh, soon after Derek went to Reading, one of his, I mean, he went initially to do postgraduate work, but one of his uh, lecturers, who then became a colleague, um, ran a magical group. So Derek went along to that when I returned to Reading. Um, they were looking for sopranos, as choirs often are. Yeah. So I joined under pretext of being a soprano. And the moment I started, I became an alto, but never mind. So he, he and I sang madrigals for many, many years. And in fact, a couple of years, no, it was last year, I thought, I'm really missing singing madrigals. So I joined the U3A madrigal group, which fortunately has been carrying on in on Zoom. So I, I've been doing that. I mean, it's, it's quite funny because there's your pathetic voice in your little room and nobody can hear it because we're all muted. No. But yeah. but it's a nice thing to do. <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. You, you've still been a member of the Wesley Choir over the years for um, as, certainly as long as, I've, as long as I've been at the church. But you, you've joined us on um, for our virtual recording, sending in two or three hymn tracks every week. Um, how have you found that experience? Well, initially it, it was very daunting. And I have to say, for people listening, Ben was in incredibly helpful about this poor old dear who didn't quite know how to manage her devices. So I had to phone him up and he talked me through it. And after that, that was fine. But I think it's brilliant. I mean, you must do a huge amount of editing because let's face it, we are an amateur choir. You know, people there are people with varying skills. Some people have not done a lot of singing with choirs, but somehow when you listen on a Sunday, this is really very impressive. <laughs> Yeah, and, I don't and know what you do with it. No, well, it's a strange situation for everybody because sing, I mean, singing into your phone is quite an odd experience, and and it, it certainly is for me, even even though I don't have to do much of it because I'm usually doing the editing. But it, it's a it's a strange thing, and then having to work out what format it is in to send it, and um, and then when I send or we send emails with lots of you must do this, you must do this, you mustn't do this, you know, being being picky, but actually. We've noticed the quality of the singing has improved. The more we've done it, we've been going since Easter now. Um, we've got at least 90 hymns on our list that we've done over that time, um, which are being circulated in our services. And the, the the quality of singing has has improved. People often say this, you must do loads of editing. I have to be honest, I don't. Um, I'm, uh, I'm a perfectionist, so that probably slows the process down a little bit. But I, there's no auto-tuning or anything. It's what there is goes in and actually... If someone sings the wrong word, I'll just take the word out. That's it's very simple. It's it's very much the the sound that those produ those singers are producing. I think we'll we'll end now with some quick fire questions. Martin, we'll we'll start with you. Okay, we'll just do a, a few uh, tea or coffee. Tea, insofar as I'm allergic to coffee and other such products. Well, that's an easy answer, then, isn't it? Yes. Good. Uh, theater or cinema? Ooh, theater. You see, I gave that one to you deliberately. You see. Uh, pizza or pasta? Ooh, um, pizza, insofar as the short and the slang is czar, and it's a wicked, brilliant word in Scrabble. Fair enough. That's the we should have talked about that, but we would have been here all night. Martin is a, is a Scrabble, uh, a Scrabble genius, but that's let's not start that. That's that another, another podcast one. altogether. That's another one. Um, summer or winter? Uh, oh gosh, uh, winter, insofar as I get hay fever in the summer, it wrecks it. Fair enough. That's a very good, very good answer. Favorite actor, male or female? Ooh, you can't help but love Judy Dench. That's very true. David Tennant does a podcast, and he had he had Judy Dench on. She just started quoting almost an entire Shakespeare play, and it was just adorable. Um, the national treasure. So yes, you cannot cannot beat uh, Judy Dench. And Faye, what's your favorite edition or translation of the Bible? Ooh. Well, my favourite edition of the Bible is the one, I can't recall it now, actually, because it's the one I got on my for Christmas in 1982 that I still use at home. And the one brought to me, brought to me by my grandma and granddad. And so whichever edition that is, that is my favourite because it's that good book from good grandparents. Great. Uh, Joan, let's have, let's have some for you. Sweet or savoury? Sweet. Train or plain? Train. Good answer. Uh, card game or board game? Board game. Uh, what's your favourite way to have eggs for breakfast? Poached. Uh, your favourite holiday destination? Anywhere in France. Fantastic. And your favourite hymn? That's a difficult one. Um, 
let, let's say my song is love unknown i'm very fond of that one fantastic that's a that's a lovely and we i don't think we've done that one in in lockdown yet have we we might have to uh i have to bring that one out for you joan but that seems like a, a very good place to end with a, a gorgeous hymn like that ringing in our ears um so thank you bo- uh, both joan and martin for your your contributions and your stories and i've certainly learned an awful lot today that i didn't know um, about you both thank you at home for listening uh, i hope you've enjoyed it remember to like this podcast and subscribe to our youtube channel to ensure you don't miss any future episodes you can also keep up to date with all the goings on at wesley via facebook twitter and instagram pages by searching wesley methodist church reading or by visiting www.wesleychurchreading.org we'd love to hear from you too maybe you'd like to be involved in an episode of answers on a podcast please do get in touch but until next time cheerio